Hey guys, welcome to Saturday. We're making corned beef a day late, just like we did last year because I, I, I forgot until it was actually St. Patrick's Day and I was like, I really want corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, I told him yesterday. Last year we even had a blog called St. Patrick's Day a day late. Today and we're doing it, same thing. We're doing it again, you guys, so here's our corned beef. And I figured I'd teach you how to make it, so. Put a giant thing of corned beef on a, in a pan, pot, yeah. I guess. I don't know if I should keep, like, the dishes. I don't think I will. It does come with, like, a little pack of, like, seasoning, and I may use that, but right now I'm just, like, grazing the sides, is what we'd call it. Um, I'm just cooking it on all sides for a little bit, and then you're just going to cover it with water and let it cook forever. Like... Hours and hours. Hours and hours. Like six hours or so, which works because I'll be home from work in about six hours. And then throw some potatoes in near the end. We'll show that later and some cabbage and stuff. So right now, I'm just going to flip it on all sides and then cover it with water and then get ready to go to work. Ah. So you have to like move it around and stuff in the pot? Well, I'm just flipping it to a different side. Yeah. Ah, I can't flip it. These ones are too short. Oh look, it's already cooked nicely. It's, this is to make the outsides a little bit more cooked, I guess, to make it like, not crispy, but you know, give it extra flavor. And I already had it going for a couple minutes. You want the pan hot when you put it in, and I didn't want the meat to stick, and I wasn't sure if I would, so I did spray some pan in it Yeah. first, just like really quickly before I dumped it in. And then, so yeah, it'll be put in water for a long time. It'll just kind of boil, I guess, on low heat for a while after that? Yeah, I'll probably move it down to about right there. Okay. I just had it up higher so that the pan would be hot, but... Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to cover it in water once I cook all sides for a minute. And then, yeah, cooking it on the stove, like, you can cook it in a crock pot, but cooking it in the stove means that you can just braise the sides and then fill it with water and then leave it. Whereas if you cook it in a crock pot, you need to do this. And then put it in the crock pot. Yeah, yeah. Which I think I did last year because I didn't want to have to like pay attention to the stove at all since I was downstairs. But I'll, I'll be the... here. I'll just be in my office. I'll yeah. come in and out every once in a while, you know. I'll check it. And you don't really have to do anything with it. I might even put it on like the back just so it's not like up at the front and just like leave it all day. I mean, I'm going to be, I go to work at 2 and I get back at like 6.30 or so. I have like a four hour shift. So I'll be gone until it's almost done. And then we'll put the cabbage in yeah. and potatoes and we, all that stuff. We almost made this last night, but and Chris was so wonderful and went to the store because he's the best husband ever. And then he was like, I don't know if I can make it on my own, Giselle. And I'm like, it's really easy. And he's like, I don't know, I'm going to mess it up. And so I was like, okay, we'll make it tomorrow. And now I'm making him make it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mean. <laughs> Thank you, you're the best. You're welcome. Will you get to make Irish soda bread later? Because I'm going to mess that up. No, you're not. It's also really easy. and. Chris will make it and he'll show you how. Last year I just showed you guys what I made. This year I'll actually show you how to make it. And I seriously love corned beef so much. I'm really excited. And it's covered in water and now we can put the lid on and leave it alone for many, many hours. It looks delicious, doesn't it? Catching up on laundry because it needs to happen uh, this weekend because I don't have any clothes left. Also, I'm bed up working on some reviews, which I'm feeling good about, and then also vlogs. I'm about to start working on vlogs. I'm spending the day so far doing reviews and reading and haven't gotten to the vlogs yet, but that's happening now and I'll probably be working on it until Giselle gets home and then I'll help her with dinner and then I'll go back to editing vlogs, which would be awesome. So now we're gonna make the Irish soda bread. So it says to use half wheat and half white. So that's what I'm doing. And then we need a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, 
Next we have a fourth a cup of butter. Mine was in the fridge, so I'm gonna use my hands to help warm it up as I try to mix it in a little bit. And here is where you would add some raisins if you want some. The recipe suggests half a cup, but you can do what, however many raisins you want, but we don't have raisins and I'm not a huge fan of raisins in bread, so we're just gonna do the honey part, which you would do either way, but there's all the nice honey. And I'm using a spatula just to scrape the excess in since there's like a tablespoon stuck in there. And finally, we're adding our buttermilk, which is just normal milk with a little bit of vinegar in it. And I let this sit for a couple minutes so that it could process. And I'm gonna add about a cup to start, see how well that mixes, and then keep adding until the dough looks right. Also preheat your oven like mine just got done and it's gonna be at 375. I'm just gonna add a little bit extra flour back in because I think I made it a little bit too soft. But you do want a really nice soft dough. So I just greased my pan. Yes, I'm using it upside down just so that the sides don't interfere with how the bread cooks at all. And since Chris and I wanna eat sooner than later, I'm gonna cook it in two smaller batches and just have two small loaves and then I'll put another loaf in after but there we are a really cute small loaf that I'm just going to cut down the middle turn and cut down the middle again you're supposed to do this with a floured knife but flour won't stick to my knife and there is our bread which is now going to go into the oven i'm guessing for about 20 minutes because it's such a small loaf but we will have to see that's so adorable <laughs> also while i was at work chris added in some potatoes there's four potatoes they should here. be in here for about 45 minutes to an hour or a little bit longer depending they on... have been in there for about that time <laughs> yeah so, so. Woo! it's smelling so good so the bread has just come out of the oven and it looks and smells delicious and now I'm gonna take the potatoes out. And then we've already pulled off the leaves and we're just gonna add them in whole. And cook them for about one minute. Beef is pulled out too. The didn't. cabbage didn't really fit in the, the um, pan or whatever. Go down quickly and I could have torn them more but I like having big full leaves. Yeah. And this, yeah, like I said, we only want in here for like about a minute. And then dinner will be ready, and I'm so excited. <laughs> and voila, dinner is served. B. Wait. Ah, uh, just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> We're uh, gonna put some butter on the bread and on our potatoes. This is gonna be amazing. We both tried a little bit of the meat, and it tastes mm, good. It tastes so good. It all looks and smells, and it's gonna taste amazing. So. Yes. Now we're gonna watch Moana! Which we already started. We have already started. <laughs> Giselle made me cut it off in the middle of a song, but that's okay. We'll get right back into it right now. Yeah. And I'm liking it so far. My first time watching it and Christopher's second? Yeah. Okay. Dinner was absolutely excellent. Thank you for making it. It was really, really good. I liked it a lot. All of the combination of like the different foods, the cabbage, the Irish soda bread, the potatoes, and the corned beef, all just together. Make it really good. Like, just make it really taste really good. All really good, all combined on a plate. Like some of the juices, getting on different things, like it's, it's all really good. Really enjoyed it a lot. And I'm excited to eat again tomorrow, probably. We have enough to eat tomorrow, so. At least a smaller meal, probably. We have enough Irish soda bread, we have enough corned beef, enough potatoes, and enough cabbage. We should be good. You don't, you don't think so? I'm just going to eat all the corned beef for breakfast tomorrow. Please don't. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we finished Moana as well, which I liked just as much as the first time, if not more. What did you think? I liked it a lot. It was it had good music. Definitely mm -hmm. better music than Rapunzel. Than Tangled, the, whatever. <laughs> than Tangled, yeah. And more more standout music at least. Yeah. I I just apparently this is an un unpopular opinion according to Christopher. I just didn't like the crab song. Shiny. Well, I'm I'm sure there's other people that don't like the song Shiny. I can see why it does kind of stand out from the other ones. I just didn't feel like it but fit in the movie. I don't know, I've listened to it outside of the movie itself because I, I liked it because I wasn't sure. I probably wasn't so sure about how I felt it to begin with when I first heard it. But then I looked it up on YouTube to like kind of get a gist of what the lyrics were saying better. And once I listened to the lyrics a little bit closer and listened to it a few more times, it kind of stuck with me and now it's just stuck in my head all the time. 
<laughs> I sing it to myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just, so. I don't know, I didn't feel like it fit, but I grew up in a very strong Polynesian culture, like, especially when I was, like, 14 and older, like, there were a ton of people in my church who were mostly Samoan and Tongan, and so I had a lot of, like, Polynesian friends, and I just thought that was, I thought it was really beautiful, and, like, I grew up yeah. around them and listening to them speak their languages and seeing their culture and stuff and being able to be around that and going like I don't know if I ever went to any other like luau's but like my mom did and she's like yeah there's just a whole pig roasted on the table <laughs> and like they like feed you to death and everything and any any missionaries that I knew who went and served in one of their areas they always gained a lot of weight, <laughs> for reals. Um, and they're just, like, so generous. And so I just, like, I thought this movie really showed Ref that. Reflected their culture well. Yeah. that they're. I've heard that commented on a lot, how well it reflects them in yeah. general. Just it feels... Uh, like, <laughs> as an outsider looking in, I think it yeah. reflected very well. Obviously, it I'm was, not Polynesian at all. But. It just, it made me really enjoy, I don't know, the, the style of music and... Like, I really loved the different language that was used, especially in the one song, like, the ancestors sailing and stuff. I love the language used in that, and mm. just every, it sounds really nice. And oh, so it's beautiful. I so. love that kind of music. I used to listen to it all the time when I was younger. Like, mostly Hawaiian music, but mm -hmm. Polynesian music in general, like, I used to listen to a lot when I was younger. And I just, I don't know, I thought it was really, really beautiful, and... I definitely think she's the prettiest princess as well. Polynesia. And the coolest. Yeah, Polynesians are just so freaking beautiful and gorgeous, <laughs> it's not fair. Like, one of my... It was mostly my sister's really close friends, but she was like half Samoan, so she was like half Samoan, half Caucasian, and she was like the most freaking beautiful person you'll ever meet in your whole life. And it was just not okay. And I... All the people in the movie were so beautiful. Like, the grandma and the mom and just, like, all of them. <sighs> They're all really beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> and they have such beautiful outfits as well. I think she has one of the prettiest dresses as well. And what were you talking about? And she's also really cool. Giselle, she every, every time she would do something awesome, Giselle would be like, she's so awesome. <laughs> she is so awesome. She, I don't know, like, my complaints about Merida... Is that her name, Merida? From Brave. Yeah. Brave. Is that, she's like, sure, she's good at, like, archery, and, yeah, she is cool, but she's, like, really selfish and rude, and I just don't like her as a person. Like, I can, I guess I can understand her, but, like, especially for the time and the setting that it's supposed to take place, like, she's such a brat. She just, she, ugh. She irritates me <laughs> so much. And I remember walking out of the movie theater when I saw Brave and just being like, I'm really disappointed. Like, I expected to like that so much because I, again, I love that culture as well. And I love that kind of music and like everything from Brave. And it was like so beautiful to look at. But I just hated her so much and everything she did. And she was like so selfish. And she's like, I don't want my parents bothering me anymore. Blah. And like, Ugh, she drove me crazy. <laughs> Everything that Merida was, Moana was not. Like, she was very, like, family-oriented, and she wanted to, like, protect her people. And it's, like, her whole life she's been wanting to go out to sea, but she never does, and she always puts, like, other people first. And that's why I really love Belle as well, because... She always put her father first. Yeah, like... They're those selfless people who end up being, like, really generous, and that's why I love them so much, because, like, people, like, <clears throat> don't want to name people, but Ariel is so, oh my gosh, she's yeah. just like, oh, well, Ariel I, is the worst. <laughs> I've seen this person one time, and I'm in love with them, and I'm going to abandon all 12 of my sisters and my dad to go never see them again and go live with this person who... I haven't even ever talked to. And I'm like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I hate Ariel so much sometimes. <laughs> so much, and I don't understand why she's so popular. And it's like, Moana is just completely the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And she's really talented, but she, like, works hard for her talent, which is good as well, because when people are naturally talented at everything, 
it's also really frustrating. Yeah, she had to be taught how to be a wayfarer. She had a learning experience where she went out past the reef once and then it couldn't go well so well and you know, then it and eventually she able she's able to go past it and then she has to keep working to move to the next step of each thing. Yeah. So it makes sense. I just but. I don't know. I liked her a lot. Like she was self sufficient but also very I don't know. Ugh. She just really cared about uh, the other people and was willing to protect them and uh, I just I like it when strong people are put in as like characters who whose caring is not a sign of weakness yeah because so often that happens oh can't show emotion or whatever you're weak and like that was like her strength and that's why she was able to do everything and I just mm -hmm. I really liked her a lot also there uh, spoilers, I guess. There's no love story, which yeah. makes me really happy as well because, like, she's 16, she does not need to be in love and find the love of her life and get married. Like, yeah. No. No, 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 no. I'm glad like, they realized that her being on a boat for the entire movie was just one other character who it wouldn't make any sense for her to have a romantic relationship with at all. They realized that, like, you know what? Obviously, it doesn't need, we don't need to force in any sort of love story. Let's just make it what what the story needs to be and what it is. Yeah, because so. that's the first Disney princess who doesn't have a love story. Yeah, I and think so. I just, I like that as well. I pretty much just liked everything about her and about the movie, besides the shiny song. And I just, I thought it was really beautiful. Also, a lot of the imagery with, like, either the tattoos coming to life or... There's, like, a sort of animation style within the animation style. Yeah, which mm -hmm. makes the the characters themselves feel more real because then when like the animated stuff is like working around them it makes you realize like how they're the realistic ones and it was just yeah. like really cool and like I was sitting there watching it and it like and then I realized what I was watching and like it tripped my brain out and I was like they're not real they're cartoons like <laughs> <laughs> but like for a second my brain was like oh yeah they're real because this like I guess less sophisticated art style more simplified art style, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Less, yeah, more simplified, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Is, like, coming to life around them, and I just thought that was really beautiful as well. The visuals yeah. were gorgeous for the whole thing, and the mm -hmm. water, and I'm really jealous of her hair. I want it all on my head right now. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I just loved everything about it. It was really good, and I'm really glad that we watched it, and we watched the whole thing all the way through, and it was really fun. I haven't heard any negative things about it from yeah. anyone. The only thing I would say about it is that it doesn't really have a very solid prota antagonist. Like, we get those weird coconut guys, and then the crab guy who I... I know his name, but I can't pronounce it off the top of my head. And then the molten lava creature. But there's, like, there's no really solid antagonist besides the journey itself and getting there itself. And the little bits and pieces that you have to face. I like that, that, though. I do like it in a way. Like, it's an interesting thing, and it's definitely different. But I'm not... I feel like maybe it could have been stronger. Maybe that's why Shiny didn't stand up very much, because there's no real... They had to put in a villain song, and he's really the only villain that we could have stopped for a moment and heard a song from. Maybe that's why it feels so different and out of place. Maybe if they had a more solid villain, then there'd be a more solid villain song, because every Disney movie has a villain song of some sort. And that's the villain song. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Not every Disney movie. Yes, it does. What's the villain song in Cinderella? I don't remember Cinderella. I don't. Cinder that's old. I don't there, care about that. I'm talking about the Disney, Disney Renaissance and from, from, from that to here. All of them have a villain song of some sort. Do they? For the most part. Does yeah. Jafar have a villain song? Yes. Anyway, I feel like that's the, the reason Shiny stands out is because it is a little bit standout in general in terms of that plus the style. But it's Jermaine from Flight of the Concords, and I love him. He's awesome. Anyway, that's pretty much it, I think, for today, and that's our thoughts on Moana. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I'm really glad Chris made me watch it. Me too. I'm really glad that she made me watch Tangled, and now we both experienced a new, awesome Disney movie that we never experienced before. Now, the only the only princess movie left for, Chris, left for Chris, Christopher to watch, oh my gosh, I can't talk today, is The Princess and the Frog. Yeah. Which I think I'll like better now than I did when I first watched it. Because I first watched it when it came out, like, seven, eight years ago? It was a while ago. And it I came out in 2011. Yeah. So six years ago. Six years ago. Okay. 
And I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't, I just, I don't know. I never really realized I didn't see it because I just, like, tangled those two, like, movies came out at a time where I wasn't really watching them. So, I don't know. I just was the luck of the draw that I ended up seeing that or Tangled. And I ended up saw Tangled, and now I have to watch Princess and the Frog to catch up, so. Yeah. I... I think I'll like it better now. And I really like the music from Princess and the Frog. Like, I listen to the music actually quite often. But I just didn't love the movie. Yeah. And I think I'll like it better now. And I don't remember his name, but the crocodile's an awesome, like, sidekick. And so is the the Firefly. So I'm excited to, like, see them again. So we'll have to watch that okay. in the next little while. I think that's it for today, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you tomorrow.